Alright, hello everyone and welcome to the third session of Tokyo Red. Now, Tokyo Red is a weekly cyberpunk red campaign that will pretty much run until we're sick of it. Uh, and yes, before you ask, Cyberpunk Red is set in the same setting and universe as the anticipated Cyberpunk 2077 video game. Chronologically, Red is set between the old 2020 se uh, setting and system and the 2077 video game. Specifically for our purposes, Tokyo Red is set in 2050. And if you didn't guess by now, it is set in Tokyo. Now, we've already had two successful sessions, both of which you can find on YouTube. And if you're on Twitch... Uh, you can just click on the YouTube link. It's right down there. Uh, if not, uh, you're probably watching this on YouTube anyway, so easy to find. Uh, today's session will hopefully be just as fun, uh, but before we get to that, I do have to do just a little bit of shilling. Um, as of the end of August, uh, streaming and Patreon have become my primary sources of income, and that means whatever support you can provide, whether it's a follow, sub, patron, donation, whatever, it's greatly appreciated. But uh, don't forget to take care of yourselves first. Uh, but with that little bit of shilling out of the way, we can get to the good stuff. So, as is tradition, uh, we are going to start off each session with some form of current event monologue that ties into the overall session in some way. Uh, and again, for those of you that are unfamiliar uh, with the setting, that means reading off of a scream sheet. Now, scream sheets are essentially slick flims newspapers that are high-speed printed uh, on demand from data terminals across the city. These are part in-world news articles and part adventure seed. And it'll make sense once you see one. So without any further ado, uh, we are going to have McCall read us today's scream sheet. So take it away, McCall. Right. <clears throat> Japan Today. Kendachi teams up with Arasaka. A spokesperson for Kendachi announced today that their newest product, Whiphound, will be rolling out in the coming weeks. This product is the result of corporate security giant Arasaka approaching the company in the hopes of creating a multi-purpose smart weapon for use in the field. The Whiphound utilizes the same monomolecular design of the fearsome monoblade that Kendachi is known for. In its natural state, it ah, sorry. In its natural state, it resembles a collapsed baton, which then fully ah, which when deployed a ah, I'm sorry. I'm losing the track to it. <clears throat> which then deploys a filament when activated. What sets this weapon apart is the fact that it utilizes a limited artificial intelligence and self-supporting frame to act as an independent, commandable, serpentine unit for the user. Deployment will be limited to Ar Arasaki agents to start. The spokesperson, ah, the spokesperson indicated that entities like Tokyo Metropolitan Police may be able to acquire whip hounds of their own for the right price. <clears throat> Kira Ase update. Beloved idol hits the streets. The former idol, Kira Asa, has seen a huge surge in popularity of after live-streaming herself taking down the Purple Tigers gang. Though her idol career officially ended after her final concert last week, Kira-chan has... Kira has stated publicly that she plans on maintaining this rocker gal lifestyle. Said lifestyle is a worldwide phenomenon these days, which means that kira has a bright future ahead of her if she plays her cards right. I can only hope that Kirei Chan remembers not to shame our proud Japanese culture in her endeavors. Word on the street is she's fishing around for a partner or team, but good luck catching her interest in the deluge of fan mail. Very good. Thank you for reading that. So, uh, sort of to set the scene today, we're actually going to start a little bit different than the last two sessions. We're actually going to start with a bit of downtime. Now, players, uh, it has been a very slow couple of weeks for you guys. Uh, there have been no big jobs coming in, and that means you all have some time to yourselves. And I thought it would be interesting to have sort of a, a good look at our sort of everyday lives of our edge runners. So, as you can see, uh, I have brought you all to the apartment complex, which Chono owns. And uh, we're just going to sort of go down the line, see what your characters are up to, and... Uh, once that's done, we will bring in our newest player and character. So let's start all the way on the left with uh, Xavier. So Xavier, tell me a little bit, a little bit about uh, Xavier's day to day or what he might be up to. Xavier is a nice tinkerer, so he's always trying to find something to work on. Uh, being a tech, you know, a lot of technology, but he's also been traveling around the city trying to get a good uh, lay of the land. Okay. Um, are you looking for any sort of destinations in particular, or are you just getting a general feel for the uh, local area? 
general feel for the local area just to kind of know as well as places like parks and stuff to get away from people sure uh i believe you have a uh, local expert as a skill why don't you go ahead and roll that so that you can get experience with the new sheet which by the way guys new sheet it's looking very nice it is now with the new sheet i was gonna do we need to change the number that's in the skills or is that already uh i went ahead and redid all of that for everyone so they should be correct awesome thank you i believe they roll 1d8 uh nope Oh, no, you're right. It is rolling a 1d8. Hmm. Yeah. That is odd. Uh, go ahead and roll me a 1d10 instead. And we'll just add the 15 to that. I wonder why it does that. Well, with a 10. Uh, so, Xavier, what you find is uh, quite a lot. In fact, you might have even found a few lesser known places that even Chono, a literal resident of the area, doesn't know about. Um, I'll leave it to your imagination and your discretion as to any named places. But, for example, you find a uh, chop shop where you could probably pick up uh, various tech parts. You find um, a back alley doctor, which if you needed to get some work done on your cyberware that you didn't want to do yourselves or that you didn't want a car to do, they could probably do it. Uh, you also find a very nice tea shop. Uh, has a lot of oriental teas. Uh, a lot of uh, exotic blends. Uh, they even store uh, different uh, flavors of coffee, which, uh, to my knowledge, is kind of a rarity these days. So that's what you get with your roll. Awesome. Cool. So up next, we're going to go to Enzo. Uh, going to go to Enzo. So what is Enzo doing in his day to day? A lot of gun maintenance, uh, maintaining his cyber arms. It's probably a uh... Got quite a bit of limb replacement after a, a hard life, a near-death experience. He likes, so he likes to keep that in tip-top condition and maintaining the um, the mask of humanity, covering, making them look like um, move so they um, move without squeaking, looking organic when covered with clothing, that sort of. Thing. Okay. Uh, out of curiosity. All about the mission, not a lot of social life. I suppose, like, the one bit of life other than work he has is probably, like, a bonsai tree he's meticulously grooming. Ooh, bonsai. Uh, well, that actually brings up two questions. So, first question I had out of curiosity was, um, I will just start with the bonsai because it's fresh. Uh, the bonsai tree, uh, is it a, like, you don't have to give me, like, an actual, like, breed of plant or anything, but is it, like, a purple one, a red one? It's very traditional, you know, kind of green bonsai tree. Okay. A little miniature tree there and a kind of a, a, a square ceramic dish that's pretty much set on the, the dining room table. Okay. Okay. Doesn't you isn't used for food or anything like that. He eats over like the sink probably, and everything else is entirely business. No, no photos, like no decorations, no painting. Gotcha. Like, Very guns sp spread out over the coffee table. Well, I mean that's just standard fare when you're an edge runner. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, my second question is uh, related to your ammo. Now, of course, we're not actually tracking ammo. Uh, but because you have what is essentially a quote unquote end game weapon, um, mm -hmm. because you're a solo, um, give me a ballpark estimate. And it does, again, it doesn't have to be an actual number, but about how much ammo would you say you have for your assault rifle at the current moment? Hmm. He's probably trying to keep the low profile. And so he's trying to avoid using it and also um, spending too much ammo because then he has to find uh, new black market sources. Mm -hmm. So he probably has those, you know, it's like a half dozen clips. Respectable amount. So and... yeah, respectable amount, but that's like all he has at the moment. And then after that, it's, it's just a actually start greasing palm and getting probably hard to import. Gotcha. And that actually brings up a good opportunity to discuss your, uh, your living wages. So, uh, as a few people have asked, I'm not specifically keeping track of these guys' income, at least not until the full rules come out. 
um, because right now we don't really have an economy. We would have to go back to the 2020 rules, which we might end up doing. Um, but right now, red doesn't have an economy to say bullets cost this much, guns cost this much. Um, so until we go back to 2020, you know, and pull some rules from that, or until the full rules come out, we're just going to sort of hand wave it. We'll go with what feels right with the role play, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that is Enzo. Uh, Airbags will be joining us a little bit into the session. So we're going to go to Akari and then Chono and then our new character. So Akari, what are you up to? Uh, So Akari's door, or the door to Akari's apartment, uh, has the room number um, pulled down and replaced with 404, room not found. Mm -hmm. One of her few puns that she likes to carry around with her. Um, Inside... Almost all hours of the day, there can be heard sounds of power tools, a welder, the occasional swear as she cuts her and burns herself. Um, and there's all sorts of traffic coming to and from her apartment at all times um, as people bring in uh, tools for, for fixing or trading uh, favors for tools, etc., or favors for trades. Um, she's most often seen outside lugging a massive arc welder with some, um, I think it was some acetylene bottles that we found from the Purple Tigers, mm-hmm. uh, to either Xavier's or Airbags' place, as this is a tool that has been acquired by the group and therefore seems right to share to the group as deemed necessary. Cool. Um, yeah, she's totally torn out the dining room and much of the living room fixtures and replaced it with workbenches and tools that are strewn here and there. Um, Anyone asking of the fate of the dining room table doesn't get an answer. Rip dining room table. Okay. So that actually brings up another good point. Uh, I know at the end of last session, we sort of left the fate of the Purple Tigers somewhat uh, unknowable, but let's make sure we're all on the same page here. Uh, What would you guys have done with the Purple Tigers? Would you have roped them in under your quote-unquote business? Uh, Would you basically have scared them and left them to their own devices? Uh, what's the play here? I believe that Chono recruited them. Uh, I think the what I said was that I would call them if I needed like street level muscle. Mm-hmm. That's it. Okay. So we'll say that you haven't completely taken over their operation. You're just sort of like, if I call you, you will pick up kind of a situation. Cool. All right, and then finally, Chono, uh, what are you up to these days? Uh, Probably just um, talking with the family, making sure that they know that um, I have a group of people that can do things for them, and uh, yeah, just probably that and harassing What's-His-Face that gave us that job for um, Kira. Okay. Uh, for reference, uh, I have given you guys access to, under NPCs, you should at least see the major NPCs. Uh, so, for example, for just like real, you should see Officer Lance. Uh, for Kawhi, you should see uh, Kitamar Joe. You should see Kura Asa. Uh, things of that nature. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, Important for you, Chono, is that uh, today you are getting what might be your final tenant. Uh, It really is one of those things where you could potentially take on another three if you really wanted to. Uh, But for the moment, you're content with your cash flow. And it's right about now, uh, Chono, as you're sort of waiting out in the hallway uh, for your new arrival, uh, that Stuxnet finally makes her appearance. So... Uh, if we could get just a brief physical description of Stuxnet and then anything that uh, we need to know either as players or would know in sort of like a general data search about the character. Yeah, sure. So uh, Stuxnet is a young American Asian descent uh, female. Um, and her, her hair shifts colors, it seems. Uh also, her eyes seem to shift colors too randomly if she isn't focused on anything. Um, she's in what seems to be a uh, kind of a schoolgirl outfit. And um, her she has a guitar on her back pretty much at all times. And in Silver Sharpie, it seems that it was signed 
by Johnny Silverhand. It's also modified to have uh, interface plugs in the guitar itself, so she can use that for net running. Ah, so you're sort of going for a hide as a rocker boy, but actually you're the net runner type vibe. I gotcha. Yeah. Now, can she play? Well, she'll she'll try. All righty. So, uh, Chono, you look over as the elevator doors ding and open to reveal Stuxnet. And Stuxnet, you've got pretty much all your gear uh, that you can carry at least in one trip. And you uh, sort of look down the hallway and you are spotted by uh, Chono. So, Chono, for the benefit of Stuxnet, uh, give, her a, give a brief description of Chono. Um, fairly tall. Uh, Japanese. Um dressed somewhat well but being as just lounging around probably just button up shirt slacks uh always wearing sunglasses um and looks very very mean whether or not he is is to be seen all right so yeah stuxnet you're pretty sure that this imposing gentleman is probably the person you're here to see about your new apartment okay her 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 eyes and hair kind of shift to more of a of a warm welcoming color as she waves and she goes you must be the tenant uh hotel owner yes uh yes i am the landlord and the owner of the building uh, it is great to meet you thank you for having me here um which apartment is mine? Um, you can take the one at the end of the hall on the right, and he'll point to the one that's next to Enzo that's empty. Um, you can take that one. Um, any sort of um, interior design you want to accomplish is fine. Just don't tear down any walls. And uh, if you destroy any furniture, you'll just owe me money for the new furniture. Uh, but you can take that room down there. I'm Chono. The rest of the group, well, they'll probably make their introductions whenever they get done doing whatever it is they're doing. Ah, uh, I am, you can call me Stux. Well, good to meet you. And as I said, um, go ahead and get yourself settled in. And if I get any jobs, I, I will let you know. Thank you. Thank you. So, so she'll she'll walk down. And w which door had the four hundred four on it? Uh, the one literally to your right. Yeah, yeah she'll, it, it carries. She'll, she'll look at that and uh, chuckle. All right. So as Stuxnet moves off to uh, her new apartment, Chono, your uh, familiar ringtone goes off. Now, this is the ringtone you normally reserve for, shall we say? important fixers such as yourself so someone who is in the nature of handling quote unquote the business uh, I will answer the phone all right with whatever name I normally use that's not my actual name <laughs> I gotcha I gotcha so uh, the other person on the end of the line, uh, it is slightly vocoded, uh, so it's a little bit garbled, a little bit distorted, so you can't tell if it's their real voice or not. Uh, but the voice in the other end says, Hello, my name is Sakura, and I have a potential job for you. Now, Chono, I would like you to roll me a local expert to see what you might know about Sakura. And it does appear that the sheets, unfortunately, are using D8s. So we're still going to have to roll the uh, the D10 manually. Which sucks, yeah, I don't know, but then yeah, the Yeah, I don't know why that is, because when I, when I got here, I rolled, and I'm like, huh. And I'm like, oh, it's a D8. And I'm like, can I change that? And I, I didn't see an option to change that. Right. I think, unfortunately, we're just going to have to wait for the... Uh, the sheet owner to update it, yeah. Change it or no? Ooh, a 15. So, Chono, what you know with a 15 is that Sakura is the moniker for a well-known fixer in the local area. Uh, I leave it to your discretion whether or not you have actually worked with him in the past or not. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, what can I do for you? 
Well, to sort of whet your appetite for what I have in mind, I believe I have an armored car heist that you might be suited for. Very well. Is this, um, what other information can you give me? Or where can we meet to, so you can give me information more than what you just said? Well, uh, over this channel, I can tell you that I am offering you a combined 30% stake, meaning that uh, that 30% is broken up between yourself and whoever you want to bring along. Uh, the end goal is to capture the armored car and bring it to a location of which I will provide. How that is accomplished is entirely up to you. And what's inside the armored car? That is something I would prefer to keep quiet. If you really want, you can take a look at the contents, but it might be best that you don't disturb them. Well, I mean, are we talking... Money, computer servers, people, body parts, what what are we talking? Let's just how, say... How explosive of cargo are we talking? Hmm. Let's just say there's enough here that you won't be eating kibble for probably the next month. But that still doesn't answer my question of, like, what are we talking about as far as the cargo goes? Not the cash amount, but what kind of gloves do we have to use to handle this cargo. Let's see. Uh, looking at your skills here. Let's see what you got going on. Uh, go ahead and roll me a conversation, please. A 16. So uh, Sakura sort of hems and haws for the wood and says, very well. Uh, this is a shipment of experimental prototypes uh, out of Arasaka and Kendachi. Uh, I really can't say any more than that, but I can assure you that you shouldn't have to worry about random bits of C4 going off. Hmm. Interesting. Um, let's say instead of 30... We say 40%, as I now have another member of my crew. Okay. Uh, I don't think... Do you have negotiate? Um, or is negotiate even a skill? I forget. I do not know. That, that would be persuade. Ah, it's persuasion. Yeah, go ahead and roll me a uh, persuasion. Um, I have that. In 18. Suck it, LaFleur. <laughs> uh, so uh, Sakura thinks for a moment and says I will give you 35% if you use your own vehicles instead of ones that I provide hmm. 35 sounds reasonable excellent in that case I will send you the details yes please do and uh, you sort of look at your uh, your term, and sure enough, there is a stream of data coming in. Uh, but before Sakura ends the call, uh, they say, Oh, and Mr. Chono, and they're very deliberate to use your actual name here. Uh, Mr. Chono, just be aware that uh, I will not tolerate any form of, shall we say, betrayal. I don't normally threaten people like this, but given the nature of the cargo... It's not something I want falling into the wrong hands. Understood. Um, understood. Hmm. Very well. I look forward to the successful completion of the job. And the line goes quiet. And at that point, you can look at your term and see that uh, the details are pretty simple. Uh, first things first is that you are given the projected route of the vehicle. Uh, it will be coming from a nearby uh, village. Uh, the village, uh, the name of the village is not really important, but what really matters is that the route of the vehicle is going through several different nomad territories and is otherwise, uh, there's several places you could hit it. Um, you do see that the projected uh, escort for the vehicle is just going to be one uh probably one person on a bike 
and that the armored car itself is state of the art. Um, something that might not occur to you right away looking at the data, but someone else in your group might know, um, is that this is not your average armored car. Uh, but to you, Chono, I think based on what we know of your character, you just kind of look at it and go, hmm, that's a lot of features. Um, do I have a good enough understanding to know which of my team would benefit this information, whether it's Akari or Airbags more? Uh, I would say Akari, Airbags, or even Stuxnet, or, or Xavier even. Like, pretty much everybody but Enzo would benefit from this information the best. So it's really just who you want to tap at this point. Gotcha. Um, uh, out of character for... <laughs> for Enzo. <laughs> for our... Um, uh, for these type of situations, um, could our GM procure us a, let's say, a common room to where we could go over these jobs type map? Yeah, uh, you can get that started, and I'll just uh, throw together a common room real fast. Sounds so let's, good. Let's say for sake of argument that uh, you guys have all gathered in the common room, and you are discussing this job. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll go down the doorways and... Um, knock on the doors, let everybody know I, I've got work and to meet me in the, uh, um, to meet me in the common room, the lounge, the, uh, game room, whatever. <clears throat> Johnny Silverhand music is, is just blasting from Stuck's next rooms. That wasn't a sentence. Um, and if... If everybody shows up, I mean, obviously, uh, I know Bishop's not here, but I'm sure airbags will come down. But if Stuxnet doesn't come down because of not being able to hear me, then I'll send Enzo up to pound on the door. Because Enzo's got to have stuff to do, too. Yeah, I was going to say, so Enzo, uh, I leave it to your discretion between you and Stuxnet, how that plays out. Is he actually going to be bang on my door? <laughs> I don't know. Does she, does she hear? Uh... <laughs> well, I guess I'll um, happen to be walking out into the hallway investigating. Just going to um, maybe introducing myself to the new person. <laughs> okay. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't think. All right. Okay, boss, what's the gig? So, I got a call from another fixer. Um, one whose handle is um, fairly respected, or at least known to get stuff done. Um, and he's handed a gig off to us. So this either means that he's involved in it somehow on the other end, um, not meaning he's setting us up, but as in he was involved in setting setting this whole thing up, but now he wants what's in it. Or whatever. But, perfect. The ah, room from nice. where we plan to take over the world. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, the information I've gotten, and I'll start putting it up onto the uh, onto whatever screen I can on the table, mm -hmm. um, is that we are um, uh, we've been hired to snatch a armored car. The contents of the ar armored car is mostly unknown to me, other than it is some sort of prototype items. Um, and the security, however, is going to be very light as far as escorts, just one person on a bike. Unfortunately, though, um, and I think some of you might know this, but might be able to read this better than I can, the armored car, let's just say, is uh, fully loaded with upgrades off the lot. Um, and I'll punch up or, or hand out whatever um, the information that I have on all of the upgrades for the armored car. All righty. So, uh, what I'm going to say here is that anyone wishing to gain further insight uh, into the specs of the armored vehicle, 
Uh, you may roll me a basic tech. You may roll me a cyber tech. Uh, really, just whichever you would prefer in this instance. Okay, I'll roll basic. And right, uh, I don't do well at basic. In uh, I think Stuxnet, you just have basic, yeah. Mm-hmm. It would be a. <laughs> McCall, you and I have opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah. I'll... Hey, I'll let you take the lead on tech this time around. Don't forget the exploding, imploding dice. Yeah, so uh, technically you get to roll another d10 if you wish, but with a 27, I'll just say you got it. You you got it. All right, a 34, even better. Um, so, Xavier, you're looking at the uh, specs, and three major things stick out to you. The first is that there is actually an embedded turret uh, within the car itself. Uh, it might be controlled uh, remotely, but it might also just be a uh, sort of passenger seat, sort of wielded weapon. Um, it's one of those things where, like, the passenger doesn't have to actually, like, get out like a Hummer or something. It's, you know, it would pop out of a compartment and then just remotely fire kind of a thing. Um, that's uh, item one. Item two is that you're seeing that apparently this armored car is a little bit more beefier than usual. Uh, by that I mean it has extra armor, uh, its engine is a little bit more powerful, and its tires are rated for uh, bullets, meaning that it's going to be very hard to shoot out the tires. Um, the third and final thing uh, which catches your attention is the fact that, uh, strangely, or perhaps not really strange, but just as an item of interest, um, the vehicle itself seems to have a self-contained uh, network that manages not only the um the turret but probably any tracking devices uh the route guidance etc etc i will relay all of that information to the party um apparently my care my character just was far too distracted by stux's hair um how old does your character how old Um, does your character appear i would say or young 20s okay so not much younger than me okay i'm just going to i'm not hair, paying much hair, attention the hair, the hair does change just on its yeah. own unless you it's really nice i'm not paying attention to the documents being thrown across the table i'm just looking at the hair and i'm just going so newbie you're the one responsible for all this johnny silverhand music that's been blaring at 130 decibels 140 actually but uh but but uh yes yes right if i wear out if i have to buy a new ear implants it's coming out of your pay you understand this okay i'm sorry i understand welcome aboard and i just sigh and go back to studying whatever uh sorry you were saying something about bulletproof tires yes this vehicle has been outfitted with quite a lot of technology that could come in to to be of use of us for us bulletproof or against tires. us hopefully not against us but bulletproof tires is one of the features i've noticed as well as just in general being a beefy uh vehicle uh upgraded pretty much everything do we do we know who owns this vehicle is it corporate governmental I I would guess, seeing as how these are some sort of prototypes, it is probably corporate. It's a corporation yeah. moving it from wherever the production facility is to either buyers or a showroom or something of that nature. But the job we've been given is to get either the entire truck and its uh, cargo or just the cargo and deliver it to um, a predetermined location. So... Do we, what was that? How much of the route do we have? Um, I have most of the route, and I'll pull it up or hand out a map or whatever. Um, that it goes through a couple of different chunks of nomad territory. Um, so there's a lot of places where we could interdict it and, um, and go from there. Um, but that's 
you know, other than these locations, that's pretty much all I know about the route. I know the entire route, but those are going to be the best locations to for us to do anything. I really don't want to do anything inside of a city. Hmm. For vehicles like this, usually armored heavily on the side and tops, the best weak point is either usually the windshield, because drivers see, or the underside. If we can get them to stop or pause over a manhole or grate, we can gain access that way. That might also be the best way to, if we want to get infiltrate, either disable their the actual wheels and mechanisms or gain access to their internal network, the truck. That's kind of what I was thinking, was getting it to stop, causing a distraction in front of it, um, or, I mean, we could take out the biker that's on the front, but that would probably alert them. Um, hmm. What if... It, what it was a it was a isol it's an isolated network, isn't it? Uh, from isn't what it, it looks like and what Xavier said, yeah, the whole thing is its own network. But if we can plant something in it as it stops for a second, then we can build it in, get into the network at a, at a a, a porter router. We, we need a net runner, and I just quickly wince and look back to Stux. You're a net runner now, aren't you? And with the realization that Stux is a net runner, Ikari is going to shift one seat over. <laughs> she's, she's just tuning her guitar. Yeah, you can't fool me. I recognize those input ports. That's a D7 4 jack. Those are typically only used on corp networks. Wow. Well, I. I can't say you're wrong about that, but uh, you know, I, I, I like to think of myself as more of a of a of of of, of a rocker with a hacking, you know, uh, hobby. Either way, please don't take my tools without asking. So, what kind of tools do you have? All of them. I will have to borrow something. Twit and her, her eye twitches a little bit. And anyways, we, we can we set up have someone in the sewers underneath, which should probably be either Zebra or Akari, whichever one of you wants uh, volunteer to be run over. So then the the question is, how do we get the the bike and or vehicle to stop? Well, well, uh, well I have an idea for that. Well, let's hear the idea, and then uh, I will chip in on Airbags' behalf since Bishop is not here, because him as a nomad would have greater insight. Um, we could always have those little shits, the purple tigers, stage an accident on the route, get it to stop, and then be able to come up from underneath it. Um... Quick check. So this is a fully armored van, correct? Correct. Yeah, unless the Purple Dragons have vehicles of much higher mass than those sports rigs we saw down in their shop, this thing will blow right through them. Anything they got. No, no, no. Not having them wreck into the truck. Having them wreck in front of it to get the truck to stop. Because if the truck's got security in front of it, that security is not going to be as beefy as the truck. So either the truck has to run over its own security to crash through the cars, or it's going to stop. I think, you underestimate how, I think you underestimate how little value the corpse place on their rent-a-cops. Well, it's either that, or we have them rig one of their cars to explode when it gets hit. I grin nastily at that idea. The other option is to just have someone um, keep it simple. Have someone run in front of the bike as they're going past, get hit. That'll slow them down. The armor car is not going to stop. Looks less suspicious in an accident if one person's getting hit. I'm just going to look over to airbags. What you got? 
He sort of rubs his chin. He says, well, uh, I don't claim to know how net running really works. Not really my scene. But uh, don't you have to stay within a certain range to do the hack? And he looks over at Stuxnet. She's just still tuning her guitar as her, uh, her eyes and hair turn uh, more of a warm color. Um, oh, uh, yes, yes, I, I do. Uh, it's not, and it's not like the time of the twenties where I could just sit here in the apartment and do it. No. I mean, how close would I have to get you? Side by side, probably. Hmm. Because one but, thing. I, oh, go ahead. Yeah. But if you could, I, I could possibly disable the turret or even maybe turn off the car depending on how it works on how it's now and uh, airbags uh, points at a particular location on the map and he says I think here would be best uh, it's between nomad territories uh, it's a relatively f uh, flat stretch of road uh, not a whole lot of places for the vehicle to hide or veer off to uh, downside is that far out of the city uh there's not really any sewers or manholes or really anything under the road we could hide in so they're gonna see us uh, at a distance um but i think uh i think we're on to something with the purple tigers uh we could use them to help barricade the road uh but it sounds like what's going to have to happen is we're gonna have a uh, good old-fashioned running gun where i get my precious vehicle shot up and the rest of you shoot back while the net runner tries to shut the thing down remotely um as far as this turret goes you said it's on the passenger side correct correct so if we're on the driver's side the turret shouldn't be able to reach to us uh i would say that you're unsure uh but xavier would know based on his amazing role earlier that the turret might have 360 capabilities, but it's a it's a might, not it does. So it's you're not 100% sure if it does or does not. Okay, so the best... If that's the case, then the best place for us to approach it is from the driver's side rear, with hoping that the turret can't turn that far back to be able to shoot without ripping into the back of the truck. Um... But yeah, I think I got about 5% more out of um, my contact for us doing this job. So I don't mind throwing a couple of percent towards the Purple Tigers to get them to do this job for us. Um, we could have them be a distraction either block the road or just have their cars act like they're trying to take it and then we swoop up from behind sounds good to me and Enzo and I can pro provide fire support and then hopefully one of the rest of you that knows tech better can open the door for us I'm just going to glance aside to Stux. This thing is entirely internally rigged with their own with their own net. It'll either need explosives, and I'm just going to nod at Enzo, or a net runner. I think that we just need to just keep the net runner. Any of you guys familiar with a uh, shell game? Oh, I think so. Is that where you try to put a forty-five, um, or is that where you try to mo modify a nine-millimeter pistol to shoot a forty-five-millimeter round? No, that's called shell matching. Oh. Um, what he's thinking is once we get it, swap it between car alike-looking cars, and they'll never know which one it was in. Something else entirely. It's the the point of like the shell game. We have the P under the shells and moving it. Is the shells of the distraction? Because the entire time you're looking at the shells, the piece in hand. So we need our um, airbags. This car, that's the P. We need to get it close. So we need shells that are going to distract. You. So we need the purple dragons, not to crash and then go away, so much as be a constant distraction for a little bit. Say like 
having a street race, surprisingly close to this armored char, focusing their attention while airbags is slightly slower driving car that's not being completely reckless is up and close. It lasts for a bit longer. We move in. And, uh, well, and then we do violence. As long as you can keep me within range and not go out of it, I can do all I need to, but they have black ice on there and you, uh, suddenly stop and get me out of range uh, I'm, I'm going to get a real bad headache we can just say that right alright so what what kind of range are we talking about that you need to stay in just give me a ballpark estimate I need to stay in with like 6 or 5 meters hmm. I was hoping you were going to say something more along the lines of 10 to 15 but uh, um longer 2020 sweetie so if you're hmm. following behind them that's at a reasonable car's distance within range true airbags will just have to be on on uh on point i believe is what you're driving for yeah, no pun intended on the driving comment. Um, because if this truck is as beefy as it is, if it brake checks us, it our the airbag's car is destroyed. Well, we'll just have to get him a new one, won't I? Won't we? And I'll just point at the armored vehicle. I mean, I I would prefer to keep my vehicle. Thanks. It's I've worked on it for quite a while. I, I look I. I think I can get you up alongside it, no problem. But yeah, if we could maybe not blow up my car in the process, that would be great. Hence the shell game. If they're paying attention to two or three street racing purple dragons, they're not paying attention to us. We can tailgate them slowly a little bit longer. Give, is it Stuxnet? Yes. Is that it? Stuxnet a little bit more time to get us entry and then if things go south we just drive more aggressively pull up to the driver's side and open fire a bit oh and this and this whole time she's a little uh i don't know if anyone can hear it you might be able to johnny silver music is blasting in one of her ears as well so one of her one of her ears can hear y'all the other one's just just johnny Silverhand. right oh all right, so it sounds like you guys have a plan, so let's roll with that. Uh, so, uh, oh, and speak of the devil, and here appears. Bishop is here. How you doing, Bishop? Well, well. So, you know, uh, the car, you know how um, the whole scene, f or the whole movie from, uh, oh, God, it's just slipped my mind entirely. You know the that movie Death Race? Yeah, we're, pl we're doing it. Yeah, we're doing it. All oh, right. So airbags will be right at home. Mm -hmm. So to uh, give you the quick rundown of what the uh, what's going on here, Bishop. So uh, a job came in. It is an armored car heist. Your job is to capture the armored car or its contents and deliver it to a predestined uh, destination or predetermined destination. And uh, the current plan uh, that I've chipped in on your behalf, trying to keep in theme with you being a nomad. Uh, you're going to hit the armored car uh, while it's between nomad territories on a flat stretch of land, so there's nowhere to run or hide. And uh, there's pretty much, as uh, Enzo has described it, there's a quote-unquote shell game where the purple tigers, which, by the way, I love how you guys keep calling them the purple dragons. It's great. Um, the purple tigers will uh, sort of run a distraction, like a pseudo street race kind of thing. And it'll be your job, Airbags, to get uh, your newest member, um, Stuxnet, be, get them in range to hack the car and remain within range, because uh, if they drop out of range, bad stuff happens. Um, did I miss any part of the plan, or was that pretty much everything? Um, also, avoid the turret. Oh, yeah, there is a turret on the armored car, which might be bad news. 
Alrighty. Cool. All right. So uh, before we switch maps and get uh, get this heist on the road, pun intended, um, I do need to know what uh, weaponry people are bringing with them. Um, so we'll just start at the top and work our way down. Airbags. I'm imagining you're driving, but what would you be like having stored on your vehicle? Oh. Uh Storing the shotgun and the pistol, pistol would be the only thing that would be easily to hand. Okay. And uh, Chono, what are you bringing along? Um, probably both. The heavy pistol and the SMG. Okay. Uh, Enzo, are you bringing the big guns? Yeah. Um, don't have a pistol. It would be nice to have a pistol, I suppose. I might have to range one of so yes, I guess I'm bringing my assault rifle suitcase, and plus as many knives as I can safely stow on my. Um, you can have a heavy pistol because we we took some off of the purple tigers. Mm-hmm. Excellent. All right. Heavy pistol it is. All right, and Akari, what are you bringing along? I'm guessing a rocket launcher is too much to ask for. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then I will bring my um, heavy pistol and a, my shotgun. All right. Uh, Stux, I think you're hacking, but what would you be bringing just in case? Uh, just the uh, just an SMG that's okay. also soon to be signed by Johnny Silver. <laughs> All right. And then uh, Xavier, what are you bringing along? My heavy pistol and my shotgun. All right. Oh, and, of course, the guitar. Oh yeah, I, I I thought the oh. uh, the cyber deck was implied. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, we are going to cut to a few hours later, and we are on a dusty highway uh, far outside of Tokyo. Now uh, to sort of set the scene, uh, what has happened is you all have lay, uh, lay, uh, laid in waiting um, for the armored car to pass by, and sure enough. Uh, after waiting maybe a couple, not maybe a couple minutes, but more like a 10 to 30 minute wait, uh, you do see a very beefy armored car being escorted by two motorcycle security people. Uh, the motorcycle cops or security do appear to have uh, significant body armor on. Uh, you are not able to see inside the armored car. The window is severely tinted, which might be against regulations, but uh, hey, you know, that's their problem, not yours. Um but what's really important here is that you see this aura uh, that I've put on the map. So anything within the larger aura is the hacking range. So if you stay within that range, uh, you don't have to worry about Stuxnet getting dumped and taking brain damage. Um, as far as your tokens upper right, uh, those are not actually you uh, unless you tell me otherwise. Uh, all of you are in the airbags, or you're in airbags' vehicle at the moment. Um, if you wanted to, you know, tune along with one of the tigers, you can. Uh, but the tokens upper right are mostly just in case we have to track uh, health or anything like that. Um, so part of this is uh, the auras around your vehicle. Um, that's just so that you can see them better. Really, the only aura that matters is that big one around the armored car. Um, other than that, uh, I would say you have two to three tiger tuners with you and it's just a matter of how you play things from here. So again, you're waiting, uh, the armored car passes by and continues on its route. I think it'd be best if we got up behind them as kind of a slow driving casual. We're just happening mm-hmm. to go to the same destination following the same road and then the uh, the purple panthers swoop in, and buzz them. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking like th- they come up to worry the motorcycles, and meanwhile, I-, I just sort of slip in right behind the armored car. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're in their blind spot. They're the distraction. We're just the the commuters. They don't care about us. They got these street racers buzzing them, having a race in front of them. like it cool all right so the way we're going to play this out is we're going to have the uh tiger tuners we're going to have them start uh moving up and uh quote unquote harassing uh the armored car 
Uh, I'm going to roll a d10 for each of them to see how successful they are uh, with their driving. Okay, that's bad for one of them, and not great for the other one. <laughs> so, oh, the uh, the tiger tuners uh, they start moving up closer to the armored car. Uh, the first one, the one that rolled a one, uh, it gets a little too close uh, because you see that folding out from a panel uh, on the roof comes out that turret which we were talking about, and it begins lighting up the tuner car. Uh, and almost completely causes it to go dead in the water and screeching to a halt uh, almost instantly. Uh, the other tuner doesn't get turreted, but it starts getting closer, and one of the motorcycle security uh, pulls out what appears to be an SMG and begins spraying wildly in the tuner's direction. So, uh, at this point, we are going to move into initiative order, uh, and it's just going to be a matter of, uh, you know... Keeping track of who's moved when. So let me add all of you guys to the turn order. If I could get you guys at turn. There we go. These three to that. Alrighty, yeah. And yeah, there the initiative button doesn't work either. So oh, sorry. Well that's interesting. So Chono's rolled a D ten, but everybody else's is rolling a D eight. Well, me. And uh, myself and Airbags both rolled a D10, and we both rolled ones. Huh. But wait, hold on. No, That's he not rolled even... a four. <clears throat> Mine rolled a D10. Well, since it doesn't matter if we roll a ten or a one. Wait a minute. <sighs> That's so weird. His result is a one minus four plus eight is a five. Yeah, me thinks it's not doing it properly. All right, so unfortunately the sheets are just going to have to be eye candy. Um, <laughs> so uh, initiative, if uh, I'm remembering correctly, is just going to be, uh, I believe it's plus your reflex. Yeah, reflex. Mm -hmm. I'm not there, by the way, the netrunner. Oh, you know what? Good point. You are not there. Let me throw you on the board. We were hoping to hide you in the back seat, but uh, the GM spotted you. Put yeah, me in I the know. trunk. Yeah. All right. So what do we got here? Well, apparently Xavier is on top of his game tonight, so I'm just going to put you at nine 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 nine. Uh, let's see. Enzo, you're at an eighteen. Chono, you're at a twelve. Airbags is a sixteen. Stux, you're at a fourteen. And then here's motorcycle security one. Not great. Motorcycle security two. A little bit better. And then the armored car. Uh, pretty much middle of the road. All right, so that's a 10. That's an 11. And that is a 9. And sort by descending. All right, well, Xavier, uh, we'll say for sake of argument that uh, this is the current distance that you're keeping from the armored car. Uh, what would you like to do, if anything? I think I'm going to hold off until we get closer. Okay. Uh, Enzo. Are you doing anything? I'm tapping my armor, checking my pistol, but yeah, nothing. Okay, we'll say for sake of argument that both of you have held your turns for the moment. Uh, which means airbags. Uh, we now bring to the table what is a very important driving check. Um, so airbags, how close would you like to get? Right about there? Okay. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll me your driving, please. Wow. That's nice. a nice roll. See, that rolled a D10. I, I'll look at the sheet later and figure out what's going on. But anyway, so yes, you, in fact, roll a uh, 35, which uh, is quite a lot. And uh, yeah, you are able to, without issue, uh, get within one of the blind spots of the car. Uh, it's likely that you're not going to be able to hide back there for long, but with such a great roll, I'm going to say that for an entire round, uh, as long as you all do not open fire or otherwise draw attention to yourselves, you have a free round to act. Uh, so that's Airbags' turn. Uh, Akari, are you doing anything? Hmm. Um, does Xavier or Enzo want to go since they held their action first? No. I'm... Okay. Um, well, 
we know about we know that air the armor car has airless tires. I'm hoping they may have cheaped out on their motorcycles. So I'm going to try to shoot out the motorcycle tires with okay. my uh, just my heavy pistol. Okay, so what I would say is that um, deliberately trying to shoot for the tires is going to confer a negative six to your roll, just like if you were trying to do a headshot. Um, okay. But the tires would have significantly less armor and quote-unquote health. Okay, that's fair. So this would be a marksmanship, uh, and then we'll we'll just do the minus six manually. Uh, you are currently within uh, fifteen, I believe. Uh, is it twelve or fifteen? Uh, just, just I believe check the DB it was chart. twelve. I believe it was fifteen. Ah, uh, yes. No, it's twelve meters. So yes, the ah. DV is fifteen. Uh, but with the minus um, six, yeah, it's still fifteen. Yeah, that's not going to work then. Could I assist nope. him? Because I also have a heavy pistol and see what he's doing. Um. Yeah, I'd allow it. Uh, let's say that if you work together, uh, the difficulty goes or the the minus six becomes something more like a minus three. That sound fair? Yep. Uh, that would barely do it. Alrighty, and you both succeed. So go ahead and roll me damage on the pistol. Whoops. Ten damage. All right, so uh, both Akari and uh, Xavier kind of uh, roll down the left side windows of Airbags' car, uh, poke their heads out, and begin taking pot shots at the uh, motorcycle guy on the left. Now, let me let me actually uh, give this guy a dot or something so we know which one we're talking about. Uh, we'll give him blue dot and red dot. So you start firing at blue dot, and uh, you're aiming for the tires and sure enough uh you are able to puncture uh one of the uh well not one of the back tire and immediately the blue motorcycle uh begins slowing down and skidding to a halt so what i would say here uh is that uh you're gonna do half damage uh because they're still armored but not as armored as the main body uh so let's see so that is five and six and the armor ablates. Alrighty. So good uh, good opening volley. Uh, so let's see. That's Xavier uh, Enzo. Now that they have opened fire, would you like to do anything? No. I'm going to save my turn for when I can do something phenomenal. Stupid. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's not stupid enough yet. Like a true solo. Mm -hmm. Yes. Alright. Which means Stuxnet, it is up to you. What would you like All to do? Right. It's time for net running. So I get three actions. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first one is jacking in. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing I have to do. Uh, the second thing is, since I have no idea of this network, I have to pathfind. Mm -hmm. So that's a 1d10 with my interface. So. A 15. And what that tells me is how many uh, floors there are, mm -hmm. kind of, depending on how high. Yeah. So what I would say is if with your pathfinding, uh, you're seeing three levels and three different control nodes. Uh, each control node is on a different level. Okay, what is on this level? On level one, uh, you see that the control node is blocked with a password, but you don't know what the control node actually handles. But if you were to say break the password, I might be able to tell you. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll do the backdoor action. So same. Mm -hmm. A ten. So you uh, unfortunately you you know throw some code at it, try to uh, get past the password, and security is a little bit more beefy than you were expected. Uh, your usual tricks are not working. All right, that's, uh, my, that's my turn. All righty. Chono, let's say you. Um, so the tire on the motorcycle popped, but not didn't take it down. 
No, it is slowly skidding to a halt, which I'll show on their turn. Um, gotcha. But it's still mobile-ish. Then I'll I'll just hold my turn. Alrighty. So, uh, Blue's turn. Uh, I'm going to roll a driving check for the guard. Uh, that is not going to be enough. So the motorcycle, again, starts to skid on its tire. Uh, ends up uh, almost colliding with the Purple Tiger uh, tuner. And I'm going to roll a check for the tuner. The tuner uh, is no uh, no stranger to uh, vehicles flying at them at high speed, so the tuner dodges out of the way as the uh, individual on the motorcycle uh, loses complete control of their vehicle, uh, flips over themselves, and crashes spectacularly off to the side, therefore removing them from combat. And let's move this tiger off to the side as well, because that one's been handled. Uh, up next is going to be the armored car. Uh, at this point, the armored car is going to attempt to fire at airbags. Well, not at airbags, but his vehicle. Uh, so let's see what they roll here. Uh, yes, so airbags. Uh, the way we're going to treat your vehicle is uh, it's going to have 50 health. And it starts off with 10 armor. And uh, it is going to basically... Uh, Paint your uh, paint your hood, as it were. So it's going to do a grand total of twenty-one damage as the turret swivels and just lights up the front of your vehicle airbags. So nice that's that. eleven Minus damage. Minus ten, and then ablate that. By. Mm -hmm. Ablate that by one. So yeah, eleven damage and ablate by one. And you should have control over the token, I think. Uh, yep, yep. Yeah, I was able to move it up earlier. Cool. But yeah, uh, everyone else who uh, is in the vehicle, uh, you know, if this was like a stock vehicle, you might have been, you know, taken down with that. But Airbags knows his stuff. He, he's This is something he's done one or two times. So thankfully it is a little bit more armored. Um, the sort of bad news is that now you know that the turret can hit you from this range. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's the uh, that's the armored car. Uh, up next is going to be the red motorcycle security, and uh, what that they're, they're going to do is they're going to do their own fancy driving check here. Uh, that is enough. Uh, what they're going to do is a little bit uh, fast and the furious. They're going to sort of cross the front of the armored car, uh, spin around, and start going in reverse, giving them a clear shot at the tiger tuner. So let's go ahead and roll for them. Oh dear. So, uh, the tuner might be going down here. Yes, so unfortunately your uh, last remaining purple tiger uh, is taken out of the fight as its engine block uh, goes up in smoke and eventually as the car drops back, uh, it explodes in a violent fireball. So they are gone as well, unfortunately. But uh, before we start the new round, uh, we have Enzo and we have Xavier. Or no, Xavier, you've already gone, so I think it's just Enzo and Chono. All right. Um, guess it's time for something stupid. I'd like to try to kind of open the door mm -hmm. and I can jump onto the back of the armored car. Ooh. Uh, roll me. Let's do an athletics here. Some of the token. Press. Should be ready for the end. Let's see where it's pathetic. Math is hard. Plus 12, so that'd be 18. 18. I would say yes. With an 18, uh, Enzo, you are able to get on top of the armored car. All right. <laughs> Yay, stupid. Uh, how big is, like, the turret? Is it a small little turret or, like, a... It is uh, the equivalent of mounting an assault rifle. Uh, it's definitely not a 50 cal, but it is probably uh, larger, or not larger, but, you know, comparable to an assault rifle in terms of size. I just I just want to straddle the turret. I just want to grab a hold of it so it can't target me and I move with it. Okay. I'm sorry, are we doing phrasing still? Is that a thing? <laughs> 
Well, we missed over the back door aspect the with the netrunner, so I guess no. not. Uh, I, I didn't. I got it on Discord. <laughs> All right. Uh, what I'll say, Enzo, is that if and when the turret opens fire again, we will do an opposed check, and uh, it'll be your skill versus the turret's uh, innate quality. Does that sound fair? Sure. All right. I still want to be e as easy to hit with the turret because I'm standing in front. I gotcha. All right, Chono, I think that leaves just you, and then it is a new round. Um... I would like to riddle said motorcycle security with an SMG. Okay. So the SMG has uh, the up... Uh, eh, words hard. Uh, you have the option of doing a three-round burst. Uh, that, again, lets you fire, uh, obviously, three rounds. Uh, the DV is only a 12 for you. And uh, it's for every point above the DV, you roll one extra damage up to a maximum of three. So you could potentially uh, knock this thing out uh, if you roll well enough. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to shoot it all three round burst. Okay. Um, I'm going to spend two points of luck. Okay. Because as we all know, I'm like the human reservoir of luck. <laughs> um, and yeah. I'll take the shot. Alrighty. So, Sorry, 16. So, a 16, uh, you, let's see, so it was 12, and it's for every point above the DV, you get one extra damage, so yeah, you get three rolls here for damage, if I read that correctly. Okay, SMG is 2d6, so do 2d6 three times, or Correct. do 66? Uh, if I have it correctly, it is 2d6 three times. Okay. Just gonna copy that real quick. First one. Second one. Mm -hmm. Third one. Okay. So, uh, you, again, you lean out of your window and open fire with your SMG, spraying across the motorcycle security. And, uh, you know, with rolls like that, uh, I'm going to say that while the uh, corp guy is... Uh, Armored himself, uh, uh, the amount of fire coming in his direction means that uh, he is unable to act during this round. So he's taken some damage, so is the motorcycle, and he is going to spend his entire turn dealing with that. Uh, but unfortunately, you have not completely taken him out of the fight yet. Alright, so that should be everyone. So on the top of a new round, we have Xavier again. I would love. We can't do it from that angle. I was gonna say I'd like to try to shoot the shotgun into like the wheel well and try to take out the axle. Of the armored car or the uh, motorcycle. Armored car. Okay. Uh, you. I. I would say for sake of argument, you could probably. Uh, you know, clip the where you're. You would be able to hit where you're trying to, but again, it would be at a minus six penalty to your uh, marksmanship. All right. I will. Do that and throw three luck at it. Okay. Thirteen. So unfortunately, uh, you go to, you know, shotgun the wheel well and you just can't get a good angle. Like you still fire off a, a shot, but it just impacts the road and uh, you pass by the impact crater you've made very quickly. So that wouldn't be 16 after luck, wouldn't it? Yes. Uh, yes, but then you would have to minus oh, 3. yeah. And right. the DV is a 15, so... Yeah. All right. Well, Enzo, you're currently straddling a turret. <laughs> I'm going to kind of do the... So I'm going to ready an action for when the turret tries to shoot. I'm just going to, like, plant my feet and try to throw off its aim. Okay. Noted. Airbags. Uh, would you like to change where you are? Or what's the what's the call here? Hmm. Let's see. So the the, the red motorcycle's still in in the pursuit, right? Correct. Mm. All right. If so 
I think airbags will actually stay where he is for now. Okay. And uh, he is going to lean out the window and fire off a couple of shots at the red motorcycle with the heavy pistol. Okay, so what I would say here is you have two options. Is you can certainly open fire. Uh, what that would mean is that your vehicle would drop back a little bit. Uh, or you can stay where you are and do a concentration check. Let's go with the concentration check. Okay. This is basically like still keeping pace, but like leaning leaning out the window and taking pot shots as he goes. Okay. So the uh, the concentration check is mostly to see uh, if you can. Uh, uh, yeah, that's rolling a d8 too. I don't know why. Uh, so go ahead and roll me a d10, uh, Bishop, because it appears that the sheets are being wonky. No, ah, still got a four. Okay. Um, so with a 17 airbags, you are able to maintain position, uh, behind the armored car, and, uh, the whole concentration check was to see if, uh, you were caught by the brake check, as some of you had anticipated. Uh, you, of course, anticipate the brake check and pretty much fall in line with the armored car. Uh, it does not shake you. And, uh, you are also able to maintain relative, quote-unquote, safety, uh, from uh, anyone on the right side of the road. But yeah, that is uh, that is your turn, airbag. So Akari, what are you doing? <clears throat> um, I mean, I might as well just uh, continue the full assault against the motorcycle guy. Okay. Um, similar thing. I'm going to try to shoot out its tire. Okay. Um, I will spend three points of luck to my marksmanship skill. Okay. And see what happens. So, 18 total. All right. 18 is uh, more than enough. Go ahead and roll me some damage. Oh, no. Uh, 3d6. Nine damage. No. Uh -oh. Either my roll twenty crashed or my net did, because I'm not seeing it yet. <clears throat> You're not the only one it has shown up for me either. No. Roll twenty. Oh, in which case, oh, in which case I rolled eighteen. Oh, oh dang. <laughs> All right. Uh, with a nine, uh, yes, in a repeat performance of the blue motorcycle, you were mm -hmm. able to puncture the tire and cause it to skid out of control. Uh, let me just roll a driving check to see if he maintains himself. Uh, yes, uh, his motorcycle is uh, going to fall by the wayside, but the security guard apparently uh, is very well paid or really does not care. Uh, because what happens is he, uh, as his bicycle begins to wobble and fall, uh, he gets up close to the armored car and he jumps on the roof. <laughs> so let me... Uh, Throw a uh, good old uh, token on there. We'll just reuse the uh, the student token. They are not police, but uh, we'll just play pretend. Uh, I knew it. We've never left the net. <laughs> We're still in the simulation. You've always been in the simulation. Mr. Anderson. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be uh, his turn. Let me add him to initiative order. Uh, what did he get? He had a nine. All right, so that is Akari's turn. Stocks, I believe you're doing your net running. Yes, this password must be broken. I'm going to add three luck. Okay. A 14. A 14 is exactly what you need to succeed here. So you uh, break through the coded barrier and what you find on the other end is good news, bad news. Which would you like first? Uh, good, good news. Good news. Good news is that on the other side of this password is the control node that controls the armored car's turrets. The bad news? There's something else back there. No. Mainly the fact that a certain metallic-looking wolf that only you can see... Uh, begins to perch itself on top of the car, and uh, it's going to start trying to attack you. And uh, for those playing at home, this is the Hellhound Black Ice program, which uh, in this instance, uh, Stux needs to roll 
a uh, what is it? A interface uh, against the Hellhounds uh, skills, and uh, if basically if the uh, the Hellhound wins, uh, Stuxnet uh, Stuxnet takes uh, immediate damage to their brain, which you know can be deadly. Luckily, I have uh, brain armor. Yeah, no, I don't. Um, okay, hold on. You have the power of friendship. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that is that doesn't that doesn't help me here. Um, the number to beat is a thirteen. A I did 16. three more luck, so I have two more luck. All right. Yeah, sp spending that luck was the right call. Mm hmm. So, uh, the way initiative works here is that the Hellhound uh, is placed at the very top below uh, the first person to act. Uh, but yeah, the Hellhound does sort of whip out you with spectral codes and blades, but uh, you're prepared for it, Stuxnet. You are able to otherwise keep yourself from being harmed by this Black Ice program. Uh, so that's uh, two actions, or I suppose that is still just the one action. Uh, you still have two more uh, net space actions. Um, okay, so can I control the turret from here? Uh, if you roll me a, because I think it's an actual thing, uh, yes, you would have to do a control ability, and yeah. if you are successful, uh, you can control the turret, yes. Okay, let me see, um... I think it is, again, just your interface plus a d10. Ooh, so what I'm going to say here um, is that with an 8, a natural 1 on this, is that not only are you unable to get control of the turret, uh, yeah. something you don't like happens. And by that I mean the password comes right back up. Okay, well, you know, I have one more action left. Mm -hmm. So... I'm going to try and break the password again. Okay. Yeah, password goes right back down. So all of you, you know, the rest of you have no idea what's going on in cyberspace. You just sort of maybe hear Stuxnet, you know, cursing under their breath or something along those lines. Yeah, it's like, that's, that's not my name. And I'm... And uh, I drown out its repeated name calling with Johnny Silverhand music. <laughs> Very good. All right, Chono, what are you doing? Uh, I will do something completely simple, and I'm just going to try to shoot the guard that's up there with Enzo. Okay. It's going to be a uh, DV15 uh, for a single shot or a DV12 for a three-round burst. Um... I'll try the three-round burst again, and uh, yeah, I'll spend two more points of luck. Okay. So seventeen. Seventeen. Another three damage, or another three damage rolls. That would have been bad. Okay. Okay. And one more. Uh, I rolled it, so I think roll 20 is being slow. Rip. It should be 11, 10, and 9. 11, 10, and 9. All right. And then that ablates. So, yeah, you uh, fire a three round burst at the guard, and uh, you do impact him, not Enzo, thankfully, and uh, you do manage to slightly stumble him. Uh, but not enough to put him down, unfortunately. And it is at this point uh, that the armored car uh, is indeed going to try and use the turret. So, Enzo, I need you to roll me an athletics. And this is going to be versus a uh, whatever the armored car has. Uh, the DV for this, since it's rolled a 4, you've got it. So, what I would say, Enzo, is you have two options here. You can either make the turret miss completely... 
or uh, you could rip it off if you really wanted to. Yeah, you know what? That sounds too cool, yes. I plant my robot leg, I put my robot arm around it, brace myself, and just, yeah, rip this bad boy off. Alrighty. So a shower of sparks shoots out from where it was connected, but functionally you now have what is an assault rifle meant for the armored car. Um, but that is your turn, yes? Yeah, that's... that's I yeah. Assume, that's I assume that means I can't control the turn anymore. Unfortunately, no. But uh, Sorry? Not to worry, there's going to be something happening in that space which will be to your liking. Alright. Uh, but, uh, that is the end of the armored car's turn. Uh, the guard, uh, which is on top of the armored car with you, uh, Matrix style, uh, is going to pull out his knife, and we're gonna do a little bit of melee combat, because I don't think we've actually done full-on melee here. Um, so the way, uh, melee works, if I recall correctly, is that basically, um, it gets two attacks, uh, each is separate, and the way it works is this is going to be versus Enzo's uh, evasion. So it's going to be de your dex plus evasion, Jester, plus a d10. And that is the DV I have to beat. Wow, I, I don't think I'm beating a 20, but I do get two shots at it. So let's see what happens. Uh, six is not enough. Two is not enough. So yeah. Uh, this guy tries some fancy Q CQC on you, but uh, even the fact that you're holding a Big old turret doesn't perturb you at all. You easily sidestep and otherwise dodge out of the way of his strikes. I think I'm parrying with the turret. I like that better. Let's roll with that. All right. So, top of the round, Xavier. What are you doing, buddy? Um, uh, I'm going to hold for right now. Okay. Which means, as we come around, uh, the Black Ice is going to attempt to go after Stux here. So, Stux, uh, I believe you are rolling your interface uh, plus a d10, please. And then it is rolling is that, that, that much. See. Okay, so it's Black Ice, and it's my, I'm the I'm Manny Man Netrunner in this case, so yeah. Yeah, so you need to beat a 19. Did I have, no, a 17 here. Um, I can't unless I roll a 10, even with luck. So. I mean, all things are possible. Ooh. Yeah, no. Ooh, a one. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, that's rough. So unfortunately, this time, uh, there's nothing to shield you from the virtual attacks being flung at you. And this is going to do uh, eight damage directly to your brain. Ow, my headache. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, hold on. Uh, I mean, it, just, it doesn't matter now, but let me see. If I had the flak on, but it says stops the first successful non hellhound attack. Mm -hmm. So is that is that only for I guess netrunners trying to attack me? I believe or, so. Uh, it might be one of those things where we're just gonna have to house rule that uh, okay. it will also stop hellhound, because uh, otherwise you kind of are at the mercy of the hellhound. Yeah. Um, how much health does hellhound have? Uh, you would know. That uh, standard Hellhound would have 25 res. Okay. And do, do the attack... Because I can do a ban hammer. But is that does that count for one of my net actions? Or yes. is it all? Or, or is it one? Okay. 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 Cool, 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 cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Enzo, you're on top of a moving armored car. Do a uh, dueling with a... Uh, <laughs> Guard that's uh, trying to hit you with a knife. What are you doing? No, oh, did we lose Jester, or did I drop? No, I, I muted ah. for. So you, you you missed my long plaintive sigh. No, I do. <laughs> All right, I'm actually gonna, uh, you know, as I'm blocking with the, the the gun, I'm gonna kick him hard in the chest, my like robot leg, and see if I can knock him off the front of the car okay 
Uh, I'm going to say this is going to be your athletics versus his athletics. Sure. Well, the good news is the DV, yeah, with a 19 in uh, <laughs> nice. comical fashion, you uh, kick the guard uh, off the front of the vehicle and uh, he screams in uh, dismay as the armored car literally runs over him. Uh, to save you grisly details, uh, what comes out of the other end and then gets run over by airbags is not pretty. Uh, but he is now a super dead as well. All right. And, and that is why you never climb on the front of a car during a chase. Mm-hmm. All right, airbags, uh, it is your prerogative how you act at this point. There is no visible means of weaponry being pointed at you. Uh, basically, I think basically he'll sort of curve around and bring the vehicle up parallel to the right side of the car. Okay. All right, go ahead and roll me a, uh, a driving, please. Yep. 17 is more than enough. Yeah, you're able to stay within range and keep Even pace. with a roll of one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that a natural one? It is. So I need you to roll me another D10. And uh, we will unfortunately have to subtract from that because that's how a natural one works is it implodes. That's a 10. So a 10. Um, I'm going to say that uh, you don't necessarily get where you want to go. In fact... Uh, you are now going to be back here on the very edge of the uh, hackable range. Uh, so I've hit a rough patch of road I wasn't expecting. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Akari, are you doing anything? Uh, let's see. No, I'm going to hold my action. There's nothing really for me to shoot at at the moment. All righty. So, Stux, as promised, something does change in the network once the turret is disconnected. Um, the Hellhound is momentarily confused as, uh, you know, you sort of look at the control node that you were, uh, you know, you had just done the password for. Yeah. It's almost as if you will imagine a building collapsing in and on itself. The first floor has collapsed, so there's now only two floors in this quote-unquote building. And I'm going to say that the second control node, uh, you are able to identify as this is the engine for the car. Uh, but it is still something you would have to roll to try and control. Okay, can I try that now? Uh, you certainly can. Just remember that uh, sicking a program on a uh, an enemy program such as the Hellhound Black Ice, uh, it is a action. So just make sure you're keeping track of your actions. Right. Can I slip? Uh, so the Hellhound's on this floor, right? Mm-hmm. Or did the or am I on the second floor now since the floor collapsed? The second floor became the first floor, and the Hellhound okay. stuck with you the entire time. Okay. If I slip away from the Hellhound, can I do stuff safely, or will it come attack me? Uh, let me read slide. If, real if, fast. if I stay on the this this floor, I think I have to go to another floor. I will say that you could slide to floor two and escape the Hellhound, uh, but you would have to advance to that. Yeah, you would have to advance to floor two. Okay. Uh, okay, then I'll do. Um, I'll try and have. Okay, I'll try to take control. Okay. DV on this is a fifteen. Oh, oh man, you are just on. not rolling well today. Yeah, That's what what your fourth or fifth natural one. I know. Let me let me refresh the page. I mean, man, that that is some bad luck. All right, so unfortunately, uh, you uh, you are not able to take control of the uh, the uh, control node. Unfortunately, so that's one net action. You've got two try more. Try again. Try again. All right. Fourteen is just one shy, unfortunately. I added that two luck. I would have been able to do it, but I don't have any luck anymore. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> there we go. All right, for the third and uh, final attempt at the engine control node, yes, you are able to capture the control node, and you have full control over the armored car's engine. 
And is an action right to go to another floor, right? Or yes, I believe Cause, it cause, is because because they have speed. I, I don't know what the speed. Uh, so apparently, speeds like um. Like if I activated that that speed thing, I can use that for my, uh, I think initiative. Yeah. So uh, basically, it's going to be um, if you had but, it active, it would be plus yeah. your interface and all that. But is that for the de defending from hellhound attack? I don't think it is. I don't think no. Yeah, it's it's not. Uh, it's, it's just if I run into a hellhound, right? Yes. I guess. Yes. Okay. If I try to run away. Okay. Cool. All right, so those are your three actions. Uh, are you doing anything with the engine block? Because you have full control, and as far as I know, once you have control, it's you know just a free action to yeah, do whatever. As long as I'm as long as I'm within the the network, to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, I will shut it down. Okay. So the armored car is going to come to a stop at the end of this round, but we still need to resolve two more actions. So Chono, what are you doing? He there's not a whole. Sorry. <clears throat> no, you're good. Uh, there's not a whole lot I can do, so I'm just gonna hold action. Okay. And then the armored car, uh, for its turn, is going to attempt something. Uh, with an eight, what happens is the passenger side uh, window rolls down, and the passenger uh, hoists an assault rifle out of the window and takes a shot at Airbags' vehicle. So, uh, oh, and, the, and I would like to return fire when he's done. Yep, as would I. So the good news is that uh, he is unable to get a clear shot on Airbags' vehicle, but you now have an option to try and shoot him. Yep. Mm -hmm. So everybody who, who's firing, go ahead and roll me uh, DV15, unless you are doing a three-round burst with your SMG. I missed. Oh, and as Ooh. that building ooh, damn, as that as that build as the building as the floor collapses, I go talk about a buffer overflow. <laughs> um, and I will three round. Okay, you'll three round. Then your DV is twelve. All right, so you are just rolling one damage roll, I believe. Um, what's the uh, increment past twelve to get the second damage roll? Uh, that's where I'm not 100% clear, because it says that for every one you get above the DV, you get a damage roll. So it's unclear if that means that just passing gets you a damage roll, or... It, it does. So, so if it's, so if the DV is 12, mm -hmm. you have to beat 13. So if you get 13, 14, or 15, it's 1, 2, or 3 bullets. Past 15, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we've been doing it right then. So, yeah. so if we got 13 in the night, it's, it's, it's one bullet. All right. Uh, with six, uh, you are able to uh, draw a few curses from the guard, but he is still fighting, unfortunately. All right. So, top of the round. As promised, the armored car comes to a full stop. Uh, airbags, mostly for thematic sake, where would you like to stop uh, around, or would you like to keep like circling the car? Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll just keep pace with the car. Well, it has come to a stop, so... Okay, well, in that case, it'll just roll up next to it. Okay, go ahead and move your token. I'll let you do that before Xavier acts. So, Xavier, what are you doing? Can I hop out of the car and go to the other side so the driver can't leave? Yeah, you can do that. And hold I mean, up the shot. It's an armored car. I don't, I, don't, I don't think they're going to leave. The safest place is in there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, up next is going to be the Hellhound. Uh, the Hellhound is just going to keep on attacking you there, Stucks. Leave me alone. So, survey says your DV to be... Oh, God. Yeah, it hits you again. Oh. Like, I'm not even going to roll. Like, that hits you again. No! Wait! Uh, 11 damage to Stux's brain. Are you... What the... What is this? What is this one? Oh my god. <laughs> okay, it is possible for you to not roll a one. It's just that roll 28 you. Jesus Christ. Oh. Oh, poor Stocks. Alright, Enzo. What's going on, buddy? 
Uh, are the, either of the windows still open? Uh, the passenger side is. All right. I'm just going to do a cr- crawl from the roof into the passenger side window. Through the passenger. Okay. Uh, it's going to be a little bit cramped. Uh, you're either going to have to drop the turret or uh, you're going to have to roll me a uh, some form of an athletics to get everything inside. Yeah, I'm just going to drop the turret. Okay. So yeah, you uh, slide in the window and you end up on a guard's lap. Uh, what would you like to do? Is still the driver there? The driver is still there, yes. I'm going to introduce him to the steering wheel. Ah, I like it. Go ahead and roll me uh, while you're using your fist. Brawling, I guess, maybe? Yep, it would be brawling. It's a gra- yes. <laughs> I'm just replicating scenes from Indiana Jones this entire game. I'm okay with this. And yeah, uh, with a three, uh, you are able to slam him into uh, the steering wheel quite hard. Uh, and the benefit of you doing this is that the guards within the armored car uh, are not actually as armored as the ones that were on the motorcycles, which is probably a security oversight, which means when you slam his head into the steering wheel, there is nothing to protect it, and he is knocked out cold. Excellent. Man. All right. Not gonna... <laughs> not gonna push any more. <laughs> okay. Airbags, are you choosing to do anything at this point? Uh, no, I think he's fine to let the other stand. He'll just call in and go... Uh, you might want to hurry up, and their their Stux is getting a little frazzled. All right. Akari. No, I'm fine. Blood comes out of her nose. <laughs> <laughs> Just a really good song. Mm-hmm. Actually, is there anyone else in the armor truck? I mean, like, the one you're there... sitting on, yes. But the entire back isn't like full of like six armored dudes. Oh no no no! Uh, there's just crates in the back. All right. But yeah, Akari, what say you? Um, can I get out of the car and mm-hmm. use the manual uh, release of the door lock, aka shotgun, to the mechanism? Okay. Uh, I will say, uh, for sake of argument, that what's going to matter here is not your accuracy, but your damage. So go ahead and roll me damage on your shotgun. All right. And is this on the passenger side or the driver's side? Um, uh, I was hoping for it. Wasn't there a rear door? Oh, there is a rear door if you want to do yeah. that as yeah. well. That's the one I want to blow open. Okay. 5d6 for shotgun. I'm because I'm doing this point blank. I am wearing protective eyewear. Ricochets are a bitch. Mm-hmm. In 18, uh, I would say that you take a sizable chunk out of the metal, uh, and probably one or two more shots will do it. But uh, unfortunately, the lock holds firm for the moment. Whoever thought of making an armored car armored? Oh. I think the Pathfinder thing actually lets me know if there's black ice or not. Let me see. Does it? Yeah, because it says... Because um, it says in the little like example, it's like... Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing it. It just says that it's up to the GM's discretion how much is revealed. Is, yeah, that's true. But it's, it says uh, because of Red Eye's Pathfinder, she knows there's a hellhound next floor up so she's like like speedy gonzalez Hmm. well i'm gonna say for sake of argument for the time being that your pathfinder did not reveal the fact that there was a hellhound okay that's that's fair um but it is your turn stocks okay there's one more interface right there is one more control node uh on the level above you all right so to get to that control node, i have to slip away from the hellhound right Hmm? Or do I can I just walk away from it and go and go level up? Uh, the benefit of doing the slide action is it means you escape the black ice. Can it follow me? Uh, no. My understanding is that in order to hit you, it has to completely reactivate. Okay, so can I just go up a floor just for free? Yeah, you can just go up a floor for free if you wanted. Okay, and it can attack me. Okay, cool. Okay. Well, I mean, it, it uh, still could attack you is what I'm saying, is it still could attack you. The only way to avoid it attacking you is to slide up the floor. Oh, okay. Then I'll, I'll do that. Okay. So slide, same thing as everything else. Uh, it's going to be your interface plus a 1d10 
And this is going to be versus its perception plus whatever it rolls. So its perception is an eight. Hopefully I don't roll another 10. All right, your DV is a 13. No. All right, so you do slide up a level, but the Hellhound is still on your tail, unfortunately. Okay. But it, you didn't roll a one. <laughs> I rolled a two, yeah. All right, what do I see here? Uh, you see a, a DV 16 control node not blocked by anything. Not blocked by anything. Yep, no passwords, no hellhounds, just a control node. Okay, I'll try to... Ta oh, right, can I, uh, hold on. Can I do a... Would would an eye die? Would an ID do anything? So that that allows you to know what a found piece of allows you to know what a found piece of data is and its value. I would say if you get control of the control node, it would be uh, something you could then ID. Uh, for the moment, it's just a big old mystery. Okay, okay, I'll try to get control of it then. Alrighty. And uh, the DV on this is just going to be a 14. <laughs> Unfortunately, with a 9, uh, you no, don't get it. Two, any. two, and three. What is this? Okay. So, unfortunately, uh, try as you might, you are just not getting to this third node. It is it's rebuffing all your attempts. All right. All right. Chono, what are you doing, buddy? Uh, I will get out and... Help Akari with the back door. Alrighty. So again, uh, what we're looking for here is damage. So uh, we'll just assume you did a three-round burst. So go ahead and roll me three damage. Okay. An eight. A six. And a six. Sure enough, uh, you are able, with that much uh, rounds going into one place, you more or less break the lock and make it very easy to swing the doors open. And when you look inside, uh, you see uh, two very large metallic crates uh, that might fit in Airbags' vehicle, but one or more of you is going to have to hoof it home on your own. Um, the other thing that you see is that past the crates uh, in the uh, compartment where the driver and passenger are, you see Enzo uh, currently sitting on the only guard currently available in terms of meat space, uh, just sort of sitting there like, I'm sorry, what? what? Why are you here? Got it handled. Um, I'll holler at Enzo. If, uh, when you're done playing around with the food, uh, see if you can get this truck rolling again. I don't think we're going to have enough room to get everybody and this stuff out. Mm -hmm. I give a nod. All right. So it is at this point uh, that we're just going to start skipping through turn order very quickly, uh, unless any of you want to do uh, extra actions. Uh, so Xavier, for sake of argument, uh, I would say with between you and Enzo, uh, you could deal with the last guard and you could get the driver's side door open. Um, so what's going to be important here is the Hellhound's turn. Uh, so as you can imagine, Stux, the Hellhound's going to keep on hounding you. And uh, it is hopefully going to roll low for once. Well, it's a 14. Oh, so you're going to take, unfortunately, another 3d6 here, which could be a problem. Wait, can it follow me up the floor? Uh, because your slide was unsuccessful, it can, oh, yes. Okay, that's fair. Uh, so that's going to be another 10 to you, Stux. All right, so airbags, uh, you are... I don't know, what is airbags doing at this point? Uh, mostly just staying in the car, getting ready to sort of zoom off if need be. But other than that, he's basically just keeping an eye on Stux and making sure she doesn't, like, fall over foaming at the mouth or something. Ah, pain! Mm -hmm. All right, Stux, you got three actions. What would you like to do? Ah, oh, I want the control no. Also, I probably have to start the car too, don't I? Mm-hmm. Okay, first action, I'll start the car. 
Okay. Two more actions, I'll get this stupid control node. What is the DV again? DV is a, uh, we'll say a 15. Okay. And with a 16, you gain control. And you realize as soon as you gain control that it's a good thing that you did because this controls... How many times can I say control? Uh, this controls the tracker devices on the armored car. I see. I see. I will disable that then. Okay. Do that as a free action. So you have one All more right. net action. One more net action. Uh, is jacking out a net action? Uh, I would say it free... would It would count as one, yes. Okay. With that all done, I wanted to leave a virus, but I can't do that. No point, really. I'll jack out. Jack out. So you are free from the black ice. And essentially, you guys are out of combat. Just, I am very hurt. My brain hurts. Blood's coming out of my mouth and nose. But uh, Johnny Silverhands keep... Hmm. All right, I think I've got an ice pack in here somewhere. Xavier and I can drag the two guards who may are probably still living off to the side of the road and zip tie them and leave them face time face down in the dirt. Oh, fun. Okay. Um, Stuck's I mean, if you're going to do now. that, you may as well just shoot him in the back of the head. Stuck's going to get out of the car now. Where are the guards? Uh, they are, shall we say, over here somewhere. Look, we, we got paid to do a job. We've done the job. I don't see why extra killing is necessary here. Um, I'm gonna loot and booty. Grab. Okay. Stuff. I mean, we could. I mean, we could strap them to the top of the car and then just drop them off at on the city out, outskirts. No, that's, they gotta be. They gotta be pwned. Someone, someone's gonna come investigating where, where their truck went off the grid. We should get moving soon. Yeah, fair well, point. We we either need to use the truck or one of us has to walk home because there's not enough room in Airbag's car for these two crates. I'll drive the truck. Yeah. So okay. at least let, let's get us close. Um, maybe get us close okay. to where we can drop the crates off and then ditch the car or ditch the truck. I, what Worst case scenario, we can disengage the brakes and I can tow the car. What is this? Yeah, uh, what's what? This ten, this one again. Oh, one! It's a one again. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's, right. do, do, I, do, do I do I need a roll? I'm gonna go over and execute the two guards because we. Nah, they're people. unconscious. They're bound. They can't put up a fight. Okay, I'll just I'll just three round burst them. The okay. Head. I just sigh, shake my head at that. Uh, uh, airbags will say honestly, probably the better, uh, probably the better call. Like. I've been out here in these wildernesses. It's pretty much a death sentence to get left on the road with no vehicle. I'm just going to look at Chono. Hey, boss, considering the um, sacrifice that the tigers have done, perhaps they could, perhaps we could give them this car as a reward. I I was thinking of that too. Cool. So, uh, um, Chono, you get a call. The call is not from Sakura. The call is from Officer Lance. I'll uh, walk away from the, the scene of all of this gunfire and execution of guards and then answer the phone. Uh, Mr. Chono, good to see that you're answering your phone. I understand that uh, you're not in Tokyo at the moment. Yeah, a little outside of it. Uh, I didn't believe that I, A, had a ankle bracelet, or B, needed to stay inside the city. Mm, no, no you don't, but uh, it's come to my attention that uh, you might have found something interesting out there. Well, I I did. I came across a, uh, um, a whole bunch of uh, corporate guards killed. Motorcycles, armored car, everything. Mm, that's a shame. Do they have anything useful on them, maybe? Mm, nope. Looks like somebody already made off with it. Ah, oh, that's a shame, because if somebody had found I don't know what they were guarding, I might have been willing to pay very handsomely for it. Hmm. Do you happen to know what was inside this vehicle? Maybe I can catch up to who, uh... Uh... Who done it? 
to to who did it and get it back for you? Hmm. Well, I do not know about this specific vehicle. I just hear that interesting things are going on out there. Now, did you want the vehicle or did you want the stuff in it? Because I'm currently in possession of the vehicle. Uh, you know, whatever you could provide, I'd be willing to pay. Interesting. All right. Well, if I can happen to come across said vehicle, maybe I'll drop it off at um, in the parking garage of that bar we like so much. Mm. I'll make sure to look out for it. Sounds good. And then, yeah, line goes dead. Ju uh, just before or just after the plane goes over? Well, right as the plane flies over. So yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so I'll get off the phone, walk back to the group. So uh, Officer Lance just uh, called me. Oh. She apparently knew what was going on out here and was willing to pay handsomely for, or willing to pay anyways, for what we grabbed or the truck. Don't double cross someone on a deal, but might as well. well no, but truck. we were being paid for the goods, not for the truck. True. True. I'm going to open up one of the crates because I want to just see what's inside. Because I don't think the contract stipulated you can't look at what's inside. No, uh, actually. And he even said on the phone that if we wanted to look to see what it was, we could. Ah. Let's uh, do that on the road. Let's do that on the go. Let's not stay here. <clears throat> so I'll, um, I'll actually swap out with Xavier. I'll jump in the truck with Enzo. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll take the truck to wherever we're going to drop off this stuff. And then we'll take the truck to where I told I'd meet Lance. All righty. So, uh, as we're winding down, I'll describe uh, what you find inside. Uh, so, what's inside the crates uh, appears to be, uh, at first glance, just collapsible batons. Uh, you know, sort of like a uh, collapsing baton that you would find in any police force or uh, things of that nature. Uh, when you go to activate sort of like the trigger, which would cause the baton to uh, sort of uncollapse and expand... Um, what happens is, is it turns into a whip, a whip with a monofilament cutting edge on it. That would be so deadly. Now, what I would say here is that each of the two crates, uh, contains 10 of these things, um, for a grand total of 20. Yeah, this is, looks a little similar to what that fellow with the tigers had. Yeah, because the, the tigers had these, didn't they? Uh, no, well, the tigers the did not have well, these. They just had, oh, they had one them. of them just had a monofilament whip. But, oh. uh, yeah. I mean, it looks cool mm, and all. exactly what I'd call crowd control. We we were paid to acquire these and deliver them to the buyer. It would do no good for one or two to go missing during shipment. So I'm leaving them. I would leave them where they are. But I'm in the other vehicle, so, you know. Mm -hmm. yep, sounds like there's a bit of smuggling going on, but I'm sure we can leave Lance to figure that out. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, we'll deliver the goods to... Uh, Sacra. Weeb, weeb name. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and then drive off with the truck. All right. Sure enough, uh, everybody's happy. Everybody gets paid. And uh, the good news is that is the successful completion of your mission. Well done. Um, the other thing I want to do, too, is being we didn't give them the truck, mm -hmm. um, whatever we get paid, because obviously we're not worrying about individual dollars and whatnot. Um mm -hmm. New Yen or whatever any other Chrome type game is using for New Yen. Mm -hmm. um, and kick down some to the Purple Tigers for their lost two cars. Okay. Fair. I have made a note of it. 
Alrighty, well, uh, that is where we're going to end the session. Uh, so players, stick around for a little bit longer, but turn on watching on Twitch, YouTube, etc., etc. This was the Whip Hound mission, uh, basically piggybacking on top of the Precious Cargo mission in the Jumpstart. It's a fun mission. I think uh, if you want to run it yourselves, you'll have a good time with it. Uh, but yeah, this is where I'm end of stream, so I'm watching on Twitch, YouTube, etc., etc. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and we will see these guys next week. Bye, stream! Bye. 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 Bye.